What's up, rock stars? Welcome back to the channel. Before I get started on top of the vlogs, I wanted to let you guys know about a special delivery I got from Roses Forever New York. They contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in showing you guys this beautiful bouquet of roses that are set to last for a year. I told them, of course, and in exchange, they gave me a discount code for you guys. I'll give that to you in a second. But here I am opening this beautiful box. Um, they have plenty to choose from on the Roses Forever website. Um, they have this velvet box that I chose, um, but they have square boxes. They have acrylic clear boxes. They have pink boxes. They have suede boxes. There's many to choose from, but like I said, I chose this velvet box um, of this beautiful bouquet of, wait for it, yellow roses you guys how beautiful is that like i said this is 36 roses in here and can you believe that this is set to last for a year maybe even longer if you take care of it uh, correctly but um i just love this you guys i already had i already knew i wanted to put it on my living room table that's why i chose a bigger bouquet but if you want a smaller one for your vanity for your nightstand for your background of your perfumes <laughs> in your office whatever many to choose from you guys um, and in many beautiful colors I chose yellow because it's spring but they have pink they have blue red white cream color purple orange um, there's many many colors to choose from you guys and like I said just absolutely beautiful even Mr. was impressed when he saw it. He just kept saying how pretty it was. You guys, I don't even know if the camera does it justice, but it is indeed beautiful. Like I said, Roses Forever gave me a coupon code. It's ROX20 for $20 off. And I wanna thank you, Roses Forever, for sending this beautiful bouquet. You guys click on that uh, website and check them out. Oh, I can tell, okay. We're starting the show. These bottom teeth still ain't as. Y'all, I have started. Um, I'm sure I'm, I'm doing all this before the show starts, but um, uh, I had started doing the teeth whitening, the crest white strips. And my dentist told me that's what I could use to whiten my teeth because they had started to get so yellow, and I was starting to get self conscious of it because I could notice it when I would edit my videos. And I can see the difference. I can see that this starting to work. Today is day four. I haven't done my treatment today, but I think it's a 10 day treatment. And uh, yeah, I didn't do the whole showing you guys because I took pictures and the close up pictures is, I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. but I will let you guys know. I'll show you the beginning, the before pictures and the after when the program, I mean, when the uh, whole thing is done, but I'm happy with it. I got a, these bottom ones, though, we got to work a little harder on those, huh? But I can definitely tell on the top. All right, Chris, white strips. This is just a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the block. So let's go. Hey, you guys. So uh, before we get on with the fool of fucking niggatry of the day, you know, we have to talk about the serious things and... Um, Today's serious subject, obviously, would be the Ukraine war. Usually we leave these for less talk about it, but you know, we're gonna throw it on in because it's, it's just happening. And even though I've been sticking my head in the sand, I have truly tried not to watch any of the images. You know, I will listen to them talk about it on Good Morning America, and that is the extent of my Ukraine war, Russia war um, 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 contact because, you guys, it's just so depressing and it's sad and, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's scary to think that we could be heading into a full World War III. Um, I know the plan is for them to put so much pressure on Russia before it could get to that point that, you know, <clears throat> uh, Putin would stop. But as of now, it doesn't look like he has any intentions of stopping. I don't know if, it, if that's because he got like something in his back pocket that he's waiting to just spring on us or if it's just, you know, illusions of grandeur or delusions of grandeur. Is that the way it goes? 
Um, I just, I don't know what to think of it. I'm not well versed in history, you know, what's going on over in Russia and Ukraine. I mean, I do kind of have the basics of why Putin has done this in the first place. Um, and from what I understand, and this is really just the dumbed down real quick, not delved into political, you know, this is just kind of what I understand. Ukraine is thinking about becoming a member of the NATO, of NATO and Russia does not want that to happen. He considers, uh, Putin considers NATO a Western civilization organization. He does not want Ukraine to be a part of that. And from what I also understand is that Putin is trying to go back to when Russia was the Soviet, Soviet Union, when it was USSR. I guess at, at the time when Ukraine broke off when it was, you know, when when it was USSR, Ukraine was part of them at one time, but they broke off and now they've been independent. And um, I guess um, it, it's, a, it's an important enough country um, to Russia that they, they want it back. And um, <clears throat> again, that's the very much dumbed down version. I know I have many rock stars who are way more well versed in these type of uh, issues and, and can explain it more. And you are welcome to do that in the um, comments. I will admit I didn't try to read up on it. I just, I've been keeping my head in the sand. I've just been trying not to even let myself stress about that. And um, just when you see, just when I do scroll and see some of the images, it's very, um, it's almost alarming. Like, uh, you know, is this really going on? This is civilization, P you know, this is not like, not that Afghanistan was any uncivilized place, but you know, Many of the images we saw when it was the Afghan war, the Afghanistan war is, you know, we saw rocks, we saw desert, we saw like, you know, we didn't see like inhabited places where there was like homes, apartment buildings, businesses and things like this that was, you know, established neighborhoods. Like they are in the neighborhood as if a tank could just drive down my street right now and start bombing places, you know? So it's different. It hits home because it feels like now this is something real. We ain't out in the fields nowhere. We is right in the middle of the communities and civilization where people are living, families are living. I mean, we've seen that families have been broken up as you know many um, wives and children um, are fleeing to neighboring safe countries while their husbands um, and their young teenage sons maybe will stay back and fight for their country. Um, and they are a very proud um, country. These people do not want to live under a Russian rule. So they are have definitely decided that they are going to fight. And it's not just men. There are women I've seen on the news actually just yesterday, you know, that there are women that have stayed behind as well. Um, but um, for the majority, it's, it's many families that are just broken up you know, as some leave and, and some stay. So it's just, and, and you know, when you think about something like that happening even in the United States, um, it's just, it's it's almost unfathomable to, to think that this could go on, you know, but it's a reminder that it, it, it very much can go on, you know, and then in this day and age of nuclear arms and us still not really being clear on what exactly Putin has over there. It's just, the whole thing is just a, down, a downer. I did see on Instagram, social media, that uh, as people were fleeing, trying to get across the border, they were not letting the um, Africans, Black people that were there, get over the border. They were sending them back to the end of the line. These people had been in line for hours and hours and hours trying to get out of there, telling them that they couldn't cross in vehicles, that they had to go by foot. Um, which I would assume is way more um, dangerous and, 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 and harder to do for any person. Um, and of course, it's terrible. Um, but it's not surprising at all. Is it surprising at all? Is it surprising at all that, I mean, Black people, we know, we face discrimination all the time. Um, we are treated as second-class citizens, and you can imagine you ain't gonna, black people not gonna get much rights when it's coming to war. You're in a different country, Ukraine, of course they're not going to 
um, try to take care of black people first or even in, in order, okay? So it wasn't surprising to me. Yes, it was sad, but then again, it's war. Like all kind of shit is going on over there. I'm just hoping that um, the black people can get out of there um, safely, you know? I did see that there were some basketball players that play on the Ukraine um, Ukrainian team out there. One got out, one was stuck. He's probably out by now. But he was just talking about how stressful it was. You know, they were holding them back. The team didn't think that it was going to come to this, even though we had seen for weeks and weeks that Russia was was sending, like, all of their soldiers and shit to the border. So it was already looking like something was going to happen. However, the team still didn't think that it was going to happen. They was holding them back. And this one basketball player, black guy, did not get out. I um, mean, he was saying how stressful it was for him, his family, you know, his coaches, everybody. Um, his manager to hear the bombing, you know, hear the gunfire, to hear all of the things that was going on, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure he's not used to that. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a sad situation. I did see that there were some rappers. Young Thug was the person I think that started the call. Um, as far as the rappers were concerned. I don't know if there may have been other black organizations that were trying to help get the black people out of there. I don't know what the results of that was, you know, but Godspeed, I hope that they did get them out of there. And like any other war, some people are gonna make it out and some people aren't. Um, th they're talking about, I think I was reading, they said that NATO has that 15 children have died so far in 255, I'm sorry, not NATO, Russia has that 15 children have died and 255 people, I guess that's soldiers and civilians included, um, have died. NATO is saying that those numbers are way higher than that. I would imagine that they are as well. They've taken over many cities, I mean, completely taken over. I know they were in Kiev. Um, there was another just this morning I saw they took over a huge city. Um, and one by one, they're just kind of taking it down. Now, the U.S. response and the NATO response is that um, we're going to put the pressure on them monetarily, financially, um, trying not to get involved, even though they just sent like 7,000 people over to Germany, you know, of our troops over to Germany to try to help out. But uh, the pressure is being put on financially, cutting them off banning them from everything, just trying to make sure that they cannot use their money um, for power. And it's gotten to the point where the oligarchs, is that how you say it? The super rich families that are actually the cronies of of uh, Putin, um, they're rich because of him. He's rich because of them. They're all one big happy family. Well, they're not happy now because now it's getting to the point where they're being affected you know, financially. Um, and I guess they're continuing to just put the pressure on cutting them off, just cutting them off. And, um, you know, like I know that people, you know, money is what talks. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that works. I'm hoping that works. Like I said, Putin seems to like either have something that he just waiting to spring on everybody or, you know, maybe he's just, delusional. I, I don't know what to make of it. When you watch the news anyway, it don't seem like this man has any plans of of stopping anytime soon. Um, but, you know, that could also just be a lot of bravado. They say that he's been in talks with the Ukrainian president. Um, I think he spoke with the French president this morning, and the, and the French president said that they think that things are about to get really, really bad. Um, you know, once they have that conversation with Putin, um, Ukraine, the president, he has not been able to, of course, stop this war. They're still in talks, but as they're in talks, the fighting still goes on. It's not any ceasefire or anything like that. So, you know, it, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's tense. And it's awful that, you know, these people who've been li living peacefully, you know, one day just find out that somebody else is trying to take over, you know, and coming in and yeah, it's just bad, you guys, it's bad. I, and so I, I don't, 
my nerves, the way my nerves are set up these days, y'all, I'm telling you, I just can't. I just can't. I haven't been watching no politics, nothing. Okay, I know uh, Uncle Joe just did his State of the Union, didn't watch it. Debbie called me, asked me, you know, was I watching? She was quite disappointed in Kamala Harris's outfit. I did look at the outfit, and it was like a really, like a boo-boo brown, the same color as the chair that she was sitting in. It was almost as if they were trying to, like, blend her into the chair behind her. I was just like, but I was telling Debbie, I was like, you know, she's never been super fashionable. You know, it's hard. It's a hard place to be in. You know, she's a black woman. They're trying to make sure that she's seen, but also kind of like, you know, the same thing they did with Michelle Obama. Don't want to bring out any kind of features in her that might sexualize her, might, you know, remind them that she's a black woman, a black woman. You know, it's all this shit that gets that gets put into the the thought when they're trying to dress the president. I do think that they could you know, they could soften her up a little bit, but you know what? It is what it is. I have, I didn't watch the State of the Union. I just haven't watched anything. So I hear that uh, Joe Budden, uh, <laughs> Budden, Biden did say that he's assigning a chief uh, person to come after those that was doing the PPP fraud. So <laughs> listen, I'm hoping my rock stars wasn't involved in that shit. But if you were, you might want to start getting ready. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, you guys, that is kind of my opinion. I talked a lot about the Ukraine war. I got a lot to talk about today, so we are going to move on. But, yeah, prayers up to the people over there, um, of all races. I, you know, I just, war is, gosh, it's not ever the answer, but, you know, when, when it happens, it's just, it's just so alarming and scary and just, I hope that the people, um, you know, as these big, government folks, um, you know, as they try to talk it out and all of that, you know, the people that suffer are the ones that are on the ground, the, the citizens, the, the civilians. So I'm hoping that, you know, they, there can be an end to this before it gets just outlandishly high in deaths, you know, of children, especially just, I just hope that it ends soon. <music> you guys delicious mama named her london charles from what i understand and um raymond uh santana if that name sounds familiar to you that is because uh, delicious of course was on the flavor of love she was the winner um remember it came down to her in new york and we all remember that scene okay when flavor flav chose delicious over new york that's who delicious is who is raymond uh santana Raymond Santana was one of the Central Park Five, uh, or the Exonerated Five, depending on who you ask. Uh, remember, there were five teenagers that were wrongfully accused of um, <clears throat> rape of this woman in Central Park. He spent five years in jail and didn't do anything, okay? So he was one of the ones, he was exonerated. Um, there was a big, there was a big settlement that uh, all of the members of the five they received and everybody was let out of jail and went on about their lives the best way that they could um there was a movie made about them and like i said they were there were they did become the exonerated five when we found out that i mean people knew um that they had nothing to do with it and they were railroaded you guys so and of course they're black so you know how that goes. A few years, I want to say two years ago, two or three years ago, I told you guys about him proposing to her. And I remembered, I, now I didn't know, Delicious wasn't on my radar at all. And I had no idea that her and Raymond um, were even dating. But then I did see a video posted where he actually um, proposed to her. And then the story had come out that Candy knew him and knew her and thought that they would be a, a, a nice couple and introduce them to each other. And that's how they, you know, got together. She was on a radio show and she had told that story. So anyway, in the video, he's nervous and he's trying to ask her um, a, a, a about, you know, <laughs> this business of marrying him. And he kind of stuttering and shit and he kind of, you know, got the ring and don't really know what to do and all of this. And she snatches the ring out of his, out of his hand and like, give it to me. Like, you don't even know. And she kind of puts it on her finger. And I was just sort of like, girl, 
<laughs> that was not the image that needed to be put out there for people who don't even really know what's going on in this relationship. You know, for you to snatch the ring out of his hand. I mean, the man nervous. Let the nigga get his, you know, his faculties together before he kind of asking you to be a part of his life for the rest of his life, you know? So that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. But after that happened, I started to be curious about their relationship. And then, you know, I started to, I never followed them, but I started to go back and look at their stories and look at their Instagrams and try to just get caught up on it. And I was like, okay, they look like, you know, I mean, you know, who who am I to judge? You know, motherfucker, he, he, he was... One of the exonerated five delicious is a beautiful girl. Yes, yeah, she does look different. I still can't put my finger on what is different. <laughs> you know, she shows herself unmade up and stuff. And it, I, I don't know what it is. You know, people say she has like the yassify, or yassification. And, and then people talk about her using filters. But like I said, she's shown herself in videos. Can you filter a video? Like, I don't know. It's crazy. Um, yeah, you can filter a video, but what I'm saying is like, I've seen her with other people in videos. They don't look like they filtered. They still look the same, but she looks child anyway. You know, I was curious about them and I did start to look it up and, you know, she seems to be a pretty cool, um, funny, uh, person and he seemed like he was cool. And I was just like, well, who am I, like I said, to judge? If they fall in love with each other, even though it might be like a strange little coupling, then so be it, okay? They dated for a while. Every now and then I go back and look at, at mostly her page. And they seem to be happy enough, you know? And <clears throat> then I did find out that they were on couples retreat. Now, I didn't watch that show. I don't watch that show. But evidently on the show, people were able to see that they probably weren't as happy as people thought that they were and that there were some issues there. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, we take those shows with a grain of salt as a reality show. We don't know if motherfuckers are telling the truth or not, you know, if this is created for TV or not. So I kind of took that kind of stuff with a grain of salt and just figured, you know, she's trying to get on reality show. I know that Candy, I think, was trying to get like a reality show started up with her, but it never really happened. So maybe this was their way of trying to just get in the door. But um, evidently, <clears throat> some of you that watched that show saw that there were issues there that maybe it was going to be a little harder for them to overcome. Okay, so fast forward to a couple of days ago on her Instagram, she posted a picture of her sitting by herself and she says that uh, she married a narcissistic man, that he was a liar and a cheat. And um, she was going to tell her story soon and for us to stay tuned. And, um, you know, she hashtag the gloves are off. Um, and I saw that and I was just like, oh, wow. I went to look at his page and... He hadn't posted anything recent, but just her posting that, I was just like, okay, something obviously has happened for her to just come right out and say this, okay? We found out shortly after that that he was actually the one that filed for divorce, and so then I said, okay, he must have blindsided her. The way she posted that just, it was, you could tell that there was some emotion behind what she had said. But anyway, you know, you learn a lot when you go through the comments. Some people don't know what the fuck they're talking about in the comments on social media, but a lot of the times you will find that people do know some certain things. So I did look through the comments, and people were saying that they weren't surprised because she obviously had scrubbed her Instagram um, of his post, anything that had anything to do with him or most of the stuff that had anything to do with him, she had taken off of her Instagram. She hadn't been posting with him since like um, uh, uh, the beginning of the year. Um, although I had seen them in a picture or two like at different functions out here in Atlanta. So they were still they were still out there as a couple, even though privately they were dealing with whatever they were dealing with, okay? But they had been at different parties. I saw them at Rashida's party and something Candy was given. You know, they had been ap appearing together. But uh, come to find out that they have not lived together since November, okay? And that uh, I guess they were probably trying to handle whatever they were handling, maybe trying to figure out this marriage and working on it behind closed doors. Um, and... That made me think that maybe he blindsided her because she was thinking that they were working on things or, you know, 
wasn't expecting him to file papers on her and then all of a sudden she got the papers and so that's why I thought maybe she just decided to just blurt all that out and she obviously doesn't regret it because it's still up <laughs> okay as of this morning it was still up anyway but um you know a, a lot of people think that she was a gold digger money ran out you know and all of that I honestly don't think that delicious was a gold digger okay um, she obviously had her own money before that. They, he moved into her house. Now, I'm not saying that he was broke. Obviously, he had had his settlement and, um, book deals and all the other stuff that came with being a part of the Exonerated Five. So he wasn't broke. Neither was she. Okay. She had already had a very big, beautiful, nice home there. Um, I had no idea that these people make all this money off of appearances. And when you're delicious and when you have the body that she has and, you know, you ain't afraid to show it. <laughs> Because, child, I mean, she definitely is very confident in herself and she shows herself. And I mean, I'm, I would imagine that would be a lot for a husband to have to deal with. But, you know, she's always been that way. It, it wasn't nothing new. So when he got with her, he had to know that this was his wife. People say that she would have toned it down maybe after she got married. But my whole thing is, I mean, this is her business. Like, this is what she makes money off of as well. So, I mean, yeah, she's going to still do that you know, and, and it's going to take a strong man to deal with it. I don't know if that was part of their problems, but that was one thing that I seen that, you know, she didn't, she didn't cut down the sexy at all. But no, I don't think that she was a gold digger because I feel like she had her own money. And, um, I feel like, you know, I was watching Super Sin and she was talking about how people just what they gain from access to you. Um, you know, sometimes that also comes into play when you're, you know, when a person wants to be with you. And I'm not saying that that's what she, you know, set this whole relationship on. But, you know, he was a celebrity in a different kind of way. You know, when we think about the person that we're going to be with, who we're supposed to be with for the rest of our lives, like we seek out people that's going to, you know, elevate us. As, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it sounds like you're using a person, but it's just sort of like you're trying to keep your circle you know, always on the positive and on the rise. So, I mean, you know, and 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 then him, I can't just say it's delish, delicious, but him as well. Like he's got this beautiful woman that everybody, I mean, I'm sure plenty of men lust after her. Like he got the prize and, you know, he wasn't super in shape. Well, I see he's losing weight and doing all that now, but he wasn't super in shape, um, you know, but he got the girl and, you know, so it's just sort of like both of them may have seen things in each other. Um, and maybe that was what kind of clouded the view and made them move faster. Because I don't even think I feel like they knew each other that well. Especially Raymond Santana's situation. I mean, he has definitely has had to have dealt with a lot of childhood trauma. Um, dealt with things that none of us ever could really understand. And I'm not saying that he doesn't have a chance at love because everybody does. But the whole thing is when you are going to get with a person that has had that much documented trauma and then shit that we don't even know about, you know, you need to really know that person well because you you in for a ride, okay? It, it's not going to be um, just a regular... I mean, this person is dealing with a lot of demons, so... Yes, it's it's difficult to be there for that person and you really have to be ready. And I like I just don't know if I feel like Delicious was ready. I mean, you know, that that's some years of getting to know a person and trying to work through the shit that they've been through. And I think that they were just so happy to be with each other and you know, it was all of the things that I've just told you guys and that they kind of rushed and got married. And um, you know, w once the honeymoon is over, and you start to see the person for what they really are on both sides, you know, maybe you start thinking like, hmm, yeah, this, this ain't really what a bitch signed up for. You know, she did put in the comments on somebody was talking about childhood trauma and a narcissistic person being with a person like that. And she was saying that, you know, she wishes she knew how to help a person that's been through childhood trauma like this, you know, that she obviously wasn't equipped to do that. Um, and that, but she was trying to do it. She was trying to fight it out and trying to stick in her marriage and that he ended up leaving. 
So, I, you know, I, you can't blame anybody because you ain't in people's marriages and you don't know what the fuck goes on behind clo closed doors and everything. I just was just sort of like not surprised um, but still kind of hopeful that it will work. And I also found out that they had a prenup and, um, they both said that they were going to leave with whatever they came with, whatever they came with. So it's not like she's taking any money from him, no alimony either on either sides. Everybody just clean split and let that be that. So yeah, it's sad though. It's sad because, um, yeah, you know, you just don't like to see marriages break up. Now, there's been all other stuff and people saying she was cheating and he was cheating. Um, she said that he cheated. So we'll see what comes out after that. Um, but hopefully it'll just not be, you know, we don't need to know all y'all business. Okay. Especially if sometimes people work it out and now we didn't know all y'all shit and y'all still trying to be together and all. Yeah, it'd be a whole lot, you know. So, um... I mean, I guess I'm hopeful that they still work it out, but I mean, it ain't no skin off my back whether they work it out or not. You know, they are both um, going to be fine. Everybody's going to land on their feet just fine. It just didn't work. It, ju it just didn't work. And maybe it was just a case of rushing, like I said. Uh, but you guys let me know what you think about that whole thing. You know, d do you feel like she was a gold digger? Do you feel like they just rushed into this whole thing, didn't know each other? I don't know what went on on the show, so maybe you guys can enlighten me on what was said on the show. I know that they said a part, a part where he said that he did not like to have sex with her. And like I said, you've got one of the sexiest, you know, she's like a sex pot and he just, that that, that didn't phase him. So anyway, y'all let me know about that whole thing. Um, I mean, it is what it is, y'all. It's over, it's a wrap on that. Thank you.